so this is the video that I'm most excited about Azure is becoming a uh, um, is gaining ground more and more and I want to learn it I don't know so when I signed the office 365 I jumped and I said okay at least I will have a taste of it so I did a lot of research earlier today um, so basically I if I can show you I did all the research and then I lost it because uh, I forgot to email everything to myself so for the past hour I've been searching the links over and over again getting crazy but I think I found it so <clears throat> we're gonna go with that um, so basically what we want is you see my server is up and running and you see here this is my active directory oh, uh, it's just AD um, well actually it's right here if you want to speak into it you you will be familiar with this stuff uh, if you have seen my earlier videos so this is just security group for uh, that I created for another video but these are all the users so you see how many users I have and that's why in the previous video I did not create that uh, um, like multiple users because I want all of these user in there and some of them that are admin I want to go and give them admin rights <coughs> so my throat is killing me I didn't want to make this video but then I was like ah, okay let's do it because uh, I'm not gonna get time for another 24 hours so let's get started oh, I keep opening that page so basically I uh, to connect your local directory active directory to uh, your online Azure uh, Azure is basically a Microsoft version of uh, cloud so for that you have to uh, go with the AD connect it says right here uh, it wasn't the <laughs> uh, right here I should show you that one so what is Azure AD connect so you get all this stuff you can read that um, uh, if you connect what is uh, Azure AD connect so you see everything goes in the cloud that's the Azure right there so Microsoft used the word on premises right here so basically your local AD uh, that you have uh, you have set yourself up that's on premises and the cloud one called uh, Azure so let's go to the this fun stuff <clears throat> so it caught my eyes that uh, you have to have uh, run the ID fix like if there are any issues like you had multiple uh, admins working on the Active Directory like I mentioned you have more than 5 or 10 or 15 uh, admins they are making changes in the Active Directory and they are somebody is bound to make a mistake or two so um, I hope I did not <laughs> so you have to run this little tool run it and all that and it will check the Active Directory if there are any duplication or any errors and then there is there was another interesting thing that I read earlier that was somewhere here it just uh, I know that you you will be like why he's telling all this uh, but it's good information you need to know and it should help you if they actually ask you in interviews I apologize you can fast forward if you don't like this um, yes so if you use the Express setting then you are limited to 100,000 objects so this what caught my eyes during my research that uh, go and actually check how many objects you have in the uh, in your active directory and then there was another thing somewhere that is another so this is the uh, hardware requirement like how you how many objects you have uh, what your uh, uh, hard requirements to use the AD connect and then there was 50,000 by default let's search 
it was it was saying 50 comma thousand Okay, I apologize. So this is another important uh, stuff that you are by default you have fifty thousand objects. Uh, when you verify the domain like I did, uh, the limit is increased to three hundred. If you need even more objects in your Azure, then you Active Directory. Then you need to open call Microsoft and get them to raise the limit. So <clears throat> you see, I have only twelve or dozen or so user, but when I ran the command. To get the object count it was like staggering 300 so just imagine how many objects will be there for an enterprise or a large organization so that's why uh, wh when I read earlier it was strongly suggested to go and run the command to get your object so you know what you're dealing with and Microsoft uh, if you can go down uh, right here it they pretty much insist that you need to know how many it is and if your hardware is supported so let's say uh, go to the first tab that is uh, idfix2 idfix week so this idfix needs to be run on the server so some admin will be doing this stuff um, what is that oh hyper-v manager so let's this is my windows 10 i can so less clutter on the screen and more focused you are so this is my server all right so we're gonna run this ID fix tool uh, we can search in here ID fix Download ID fix directory synchronization error remediation. Remediation. So let's download it. So even though I did research, I just read everything and I did not do and run any of these softwares except I ran that command uh, on uh, the PowerShell command. That's it. So everything I'm doing is for the very first time and still trial and error video. Where it is? <laughs> okay it's already there i was like what happened um so let's extract all extract it's extracted and run all right it's just a message so let's go full screen query query the direct query directory import or undo I think it picked up my directory automatically I want to say only one way to find out multi-tenant dedicated oh yes imran.local so we know that's our that's my active directory if you wanna if you're new to this video let me show you um, right there imran.local so it picked up everything from the server all I have to do is just run the query and there are the errors top level domain Alan that Imran local Obama so actions edit remove complete we can complete it right So I was not expecting it. So what happened if I give all the presidents? <coughs> so let's uh, make an experiment. Let's give all the presidents complete. Mr. Obama right here. Uh, if we go to Barack Obama and complete uh, bill complete uh, Trump complete and Bush complete say let's say we did this and if we query again we'll accept 
apply. Okay. All right, accept. Add it. <coughs> so we have three options complete. Let's query again. So this time we still have build there. All right. So this shows us all the errors. That is 11, and I think we have. Uh, that's uh, the number of users I have. Three, three, three. Yep. All right. this is not what I thought but uh, if it is uh, let me go and research what it is <laughs> alright so I found this information here I'm gonna read this so basically what it's saying is that local is not internet routable like they don't have a um, dot local TLD so that's what's happening here I can ch change it to dot com or dot net but that uh, and I can do it. There's a already a single guy on both websites, and I don't have anything to do with that. So, all my <clears throat> what will happen is that uh, all the computers in my network will not be able to access that website because that's owned by somebody else, and my domain will think that uh, it's us, and he will redirect everybody to us. So, this is a very interesting web page. If you have to search search with this um, thing so what it's saying is that if you have dot local domain like I have you can sync it it will be synced at condos uh, on Microsoft.com um, domain like it will not use my custom that is I but if you it, they recommend that you change it to um, um, that you change it um, your domain uh, on your local on premises um, Active Directory to what that you have verified in the Active Directory in the um, Azure or Office 365 so there are you can read all this so they say that yeah, either you can go with this one this one is a pain if I can open it in a web page so you see so this one is talking about that you have to do this and that and then you run the uh, random command line pro and then go all that you see the fun stuff so I was like, nah, I'm just going <laughs> to go with local. But then they also give you an easier way. Add UPN fixes and update your user to them. That basically you can add your domain here. And if you have few users, you can go to their properties. And just like in my, um, just like in here, uh, when we added the user, here it was giving us an option to either use it this or that it will give us option in our local domain uh, local active directory to go with what domain so that's what we let's do the fun stuff so and then in the end I, I thought that though I have 11 users I have to go through 11 step but there is actually <coughs> so there is actually this commands that you can run to in PowerShell to change all of your users um, domain from imran.local to the other one let's do that uh, it's learning and learning is good so what we have to do is can I go a little bit here 
Where is the server? Server right here. Let's go here. And they want you to go server manager tools. So this is server manager. Um, I should show you everything here, at least on the server side. <coughs> if I can squeeze it like that. Okay. <laughs> so you can see side by side uh, what is the instruction and how I'm doing it. So they want you to go to tools and <coughs> Active Directory Domain and Trust. This is the tool Active Directory Domains and Trust. <coughs> so Windows Server 2012 or later, you can press Window Key Plus R to open the run dialog and you domain.msc. So that will actually open up this one. Next is you click Active Directory Domain and Trust and then choose Properties. Right here, Active Directory Domain and Trust and the Properties. <coughs> On the U UPN suffixes, suffixes, tab in the alternate UPN. Uh, alternate UPN type so that would be I need.org right click add so we added that okay when you're done adding suffixes so we have just one change for existing users so it's been done we activated users and computers already open right here uh, no this one no <laughs> sorry this one all right but you can always open it from the server manager and tools and this one active directory users and computers so it can open do not duplicate it for me just to run so for example now <coughs> uh, choose property select a user I'm gonna select the my name Imran let's go with that one I can go to properties and profile no it was account so you see at imran.local or at ham ihamid.org you can see that i h a m e d dot org and if we can go to our um, where is it you see it's right there that's the verified domain i have if you don't know you have to go and watch the other video where i added the uh, this domain to my um, active driver um, to my office 365 so I change it to here and done so let's play with that PowerShell commands so the beauty of the PowerShell is that I can copy paste this I don't have to type them so if you want you can just see copy so for the uh, uh, on the server right click on start button and then you go to PowerShell there are two types one is the sender and then the admin so for the admin it will show up an administrator I can add uh, paste it you see I just pressed uh, control V from my keyboard and it got pasted so I have to change this value here so can I nope so the thing with this copy paste is <laughs> that you cannot go and add it uh, in between you have to <coughs> um, so let first type in and the second one we're gonna copy paste I'm gonna show you both ways uh, I kind of showed you one way already so <coughs> so first thing let's type in that is dollar sign oh. dollar sign what is it local users is equal to get a user filter user principal name like star steric and then what it is here so we were here 
name and like right user principal name and let's uh, like steric that is going to be imran dot local that what that's my active uh, that's my domain name in my active directory on premises active directory and we closed it so whenever you are doing coding or you are doing a command you have to be very careful about these things any kind of brackets however you open here you have to close it on the other side as well otherwise it messes up so properties user principal name result set size so what is it null okay result set size dollar sign and you uh, hit enter hopefully it works so <clears throat> I think it's running <laughs> at least that's what I would like to think like in like I said before uh, it's either give you an error or it goes to the next prompt this one so if it's error we're gonna see a lot of red lines here I'm gonna pause the video here it's just taking time and video is going already too long <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry uh, so I think I uh, with this one a bit more than I could chew uh, I search online it's and it looks like this does take a little bit of time so I had only 11 users I could do it manually that would be much faster so I went to ID fix now and you remember that we use the this we change it so let's uh, query again and see if we get this one uh, again in here or it's been corrected so this time error count is 10 and that has been removed so I'm gonna go and do everything um, manually um, the command is running there in here so I'm gonna pause the video you don't need to watch uh, me doing uh, 10 more accounts uh, let's pause it so I found an easier way I was thinking so what I did is I did this manually but all of the other accounts you see I, I selected them uh, with the help of control key first shift and then with control I removed the account that I did not want in there now I'm going to properties in account it's a UPN suffix or suffix so I'm changing it to I at ihame.org and I OK so let's go and check for for example yeah deploy it's already selected what's the account it's I Hamid let's check for as an H what's the account I Hamid are all of them corrected let's find out in ID fix query again and I Alan and what's this account local top level domain local part format at I dot or we can ignore this one but Alan did not get selected in there uh, so it turned out the Alan is not in here because Alan is in all users probably Alan Wieselberg right there uh, we can go and change it to I Hamid and it's good so now go run the query one more time and now our left is this is the error local part dot format let's search what it is oh so basically what it is I removed the uh, logon name so it has to be SNH if I apply it click it I think somehow it got uh, um, 
remove um, if we query again we got zero errors okay so let's close it now we have no user and you see the powershell is still running a way to go powershell let's go to our nope let's go in here run the id fix one more time query let's just quit it so all right so we fixed that issue that's how we fix it now we're gonna go to our next part I'm gonna leave all these links hopefully um, in the um, um, in the description uh, for the this video that which one we use so next thing is we check the ID fix uh, from here we check the ID fix and the other one is just the Azure AD connect and um, use the AD connect to um, sync our on-premises or local active directory to our Azure one uh, we know for a fact that we don't have uh, over 100,000 objects so we can use the Express setting uh, on the Azure AD connect but uh, oh sh I cannot use the PowerShell can I if I exit out I sh and run the admin so I get the command prompt and yep so I'm good to go so this one count objects in active directory I'm gonna use this one this command and it does run fast so I'm gonna use this command to count the objects in my active directory but since we cannot edit it we already know I'm gonna go ahead and where is the documents softwares no file here documents no no text file here okay let's do the text file so format or wrap so let's copy this here now get ad object filter name like everything stays the same server server dc01 but is that our server name no uh, my server name yeah, let's server manager active directory my server name is server 19 remember server name is server 19 uh, you can al also see it from here oh that's the computer name so that's the server name the f uh, domain name is different so I'm gonna add it the server name here rather than server DC 01 that the guy used I'm gonna put server 19 search base stays the same dc contoso am i on contoso no i am on now i am in okay this is first time i'm going to use ihamid.org because uh earlier today i ran it against imran.local result size stays the same and my rejects everything stays the same just copy it again go to this one and i don't if i memory serves me correct i think i saw 295 I should see that and it's taking time okay it gave me error so let's change it back to Imran dot let's do it local that's the only thing we change So, yep, 295. So, I think a restart is in order for the whole domain thing um, to be in effect. I think that's what's happening. Uh, I'm assuming. So, I have only 295. I'm well below the limit that I can use with Azure AD Connect. So, let's go and fire up Azure AD Connect. Uh, let's actually close everything out PowerShell exit <coughs> so let's search for Azure AD connect let's 
download. I need to go and clear up the space and I don't need that, that, that. Basically, I don't need anything except Azure. So, what's how much disk space I'm getting? Ah, that's nothing, but still. Let's go. Now, download is complete. Yes. So, I can open it. It's gonna run. And. There it is. I agree. Yep, I do. And the next thing is Express setting. That's what I read about. I'm gonna go with single window server vector there for us. Yes, we have just we we not longer um, a big corporation or enterprise. I have just uh, one server and one forest, one IAD. So all this check. So I'm gonna go. Round out local. Okay, so basically, what's happening is that it's still picking up, even though I used all the other user to my that one. But I think I have to run that command, let it complete, so all the objects gets changed to this one. So you know what? Let's um, let's stop this video here and let that command run overnight and we'll pick up in the morning all right see you in the part two so welcome back to uh, video uh, we were doing the um, we we're preparing our local on-premises uh, active directory to in sync with the uh, azure ad online for our office 365 and if you remember uh, if you have seen the other video I said that this uh, was not working basically uh, as soon as I stopped that video and I ran this command again it worked within a second basically what was happening is I was right clicking here and then running the uh, PowerShell as admin it turns out that you have to go to PowerShell right click more and then run as admin and then you get that uh, proper admin PowerShell. So I ran, it was right then, it was too late, I did not make another video. So now I'm back and making another video, let's do that. So uh, we were taking the, uh, I keep doing that. So we were taking the commands from a web page, I believe this one. So I already ran this command, now we're gonna run this command. To run this command the proper way rather than do we type it in I'm gonna copy paste it so I'm gonna make the necessary changes that needs to be done that is user principal name replace so we know that my on-premises active directory domain name is imran.local we want it to be changed to ihamid not dot com but dot org and everything same we're gonna copy it hopefully since this is already running as a admin and we get this so I'm gonna just paste it and enter and you see right there I went to the next prompt so this should be done now if we go to our Azure ID connect and run I hope that we don't get that message about uh, um, it being game round out local account and you see we did not get the error message that we were getting earlier so enter your Azure AD global administrator credentials that would be let me if I can let's So you see now we did not encounter that error that means that the command successfully did everything oh I did want to 
do something let's go back basically I want to go back to my um, active directory I want to go to just to test because we are trial and error we're testing so I want to test what happened if I put something as imran.local and is it going to get the that add on microsoft.com account so let's select mr. Amber L. Allen as the um, person that we use as a test account I can close it out and we go there now hopefully so it's asking me for the uh, that uh, global admin uh, or whatever so for that we're gonna go to our where did I do oh that should be in here office one and that if you can see this is admin so whatever your administ admin account over there here, if you have multiple but since we have this one I'm gonna use this one and this password so there is server it's uh, admin at I have on dot on dot on Microsoft dot com and let's pass give it this password and hope this works I remember the password okay First, let me see if that's the admin uh, admin at ihamid.onmicrosoft.com that is correct apparently admin at ihamid.onmicrosoft.com so apparently I don't remember my password so let's try it one more time mm, let's see if what I have lowercase if this is not it we're in trouble no that's not it so let me try another one that seemed to be working all right domain service enterprise administrator credentials active directory so you see it's not saying Azure it's saying the one that I have administrator that would be I have dot org slash administrator right and we're gonna give its password so basically whatever we use in our uh, Uh, server right here in this active directory so this is the local on-premises username and password you can check the validate it's still going probably with the Imran dot local now let's go see it worked so this is not verified this is verified continue without matching all your pins of fixes to verified domain yeah so we can leave it there so now we're gonna install configuring and then it's gonna sync up why we need this the need is that uh, with Active Directory, that fixed the problem that people or users in an organization on a floor or in a company they can use any computer with the same credentials. They don't have to go and create if there are 200 computers, they should not have log in saved on all the computers, L mean the local accounts, work groups. So, with domain join, if you, you should know what domain is, and then you, it will make sense. But in a nutshell, with domain, you just have one username and you can sit on any computer that computer 
as long as it is um, domain join you can use it if it's a work group then for each number of users that you sit there they have to create a new account for that one and if they have to sit on another computer the same credential files folders are not on the other computer so it's a whole process start again so domain uh, fix that problem but uh, since we are trying to go online and we want uh, our users to use the Microsoft uh, Office 365 essentially what's gonna happen is that we now the users have two username passwords one for the uh, our local active directory to sit in on any computer and one so they can log in on Microsoft Office and that's not very efficient so to start that we sync our local active directory to our Azure one so users can use the exact same credentials to log into that computer and then use the Microsoft Office as well so what happens is to log into the local computer where they wherever they are sitting our local active directory uh, 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 verifies them or authenticates them but in case of uh, in in uh, in case of Azure once you are connected with Azure so you are basically giving Azure Active Directory to get the uh, authentic uh, authenticated um, authenticating process uh, done. Uh, the other good thing about that is since it's in the cloud, so user can uh, be anywhere and they can uh, securely verify and use the product or services. So it's going through the step. I don't know if you want to watch the. Oh, okay. So we're done. Configuration complete everything is done it's saying is complete you can log into Azure to verify that user account from your local directory have been created okay we're gonna do that the next thing is not enabled for your frost and forest and is strongly recommended we need to enable that learn more unable to configure password hash synchronization event log for additional information all right so we, i think we're done so what we're gonna do is this is our server we ran it from here we're gonna go to our office we're gonna go to our 365 and we don't see any user we can click on refresh and we see all the users here and you see alan we changed it so he got the at ihami.onmicrosoft.com and everybody else they got the ihami.org right the reason that's why I choose Allen was it's a so it's gonna be top out <laughs> and you see everything everybody else got I Hamid and admin that this is the first account that we created so uh, naturally it has the this one but if you go to Ali uh, where is Ali Ali right there he is that was the second account and he is uh, with my domain so you see all these like um, all the accounts they are here Ali was used by uh, was created in office 365 so it got naturally it got uh, my uh, correct uh, domain everybody else we synced they got the correct one as well Alan Alan because if you remember we at the last minute we change it so it got from imran.local to whatever Microsoft good everybody else is unlicensed because we gave Ali license when we're creating him but we sync them so we don't we can add them we can give them licenses from here oh that, sorry that's a password uh, we're gonna learn how to uh, manage product licenses for each one so now this these users we are seeing them and we are seeing all of them in our Microsoft 365 admin center but we added this user uh, from our local on-premises Active Directory uh, to Azure Active Directory using the Azure AD Connect it, are all of these users are also showing up in Act, Azure Active Directory as well let's find out so this is the Azure Active Directory we're gonna click on it and gonna load <laughs> all right so we see all of them are here user and group so these are pretty much we can add users from here as well or guest users but we want to see if all of them are here 
can I click on them yes I can click one single one and this is Aslan I can do all kind of uh, um, editing here but I want to see all users so you see all of the users are in here on this is the like a uh, automatic created sync server account that basically it will use to sync uh, an account um, on premises to online uh, Azure one so if you look at all of them they are exactly the same like they weren't showing up in uh, admin center uh, there is one key difference if your C is under source all it's it's showing you where that user was created Ali we created in office 365 uh, portal so it's saying Azure Active Directory these are all were created in our local on-premises Active Directory if you have watched all of my previous videos you would know when the which user was created and you see this is the admin account so it was naturally created on Azure so this is how you know that which one were local and which one weren't created online uh, since we run the Azure AD Connect, we need to find out if Ali shows up in our local account, a local active, active directory, or not. That would be an interesting thing to find out. But so far, for the scope of this video, yes, we synced all of our um, um, local uh, AD users to our Azure AD users. Let's quickly show you if uh, Ali made it to. Uh, the local one or not all <laughs> for a second I thought that was a leak I don't think so we can do a search somewhere here this one and we can entire directory we can do the Ali and nope so basically this is just to get our on-premises Active Directory users and migrate or sync them to the Azure Active Directory. Alright, in the next video we're going to uh, figure out a way if we can show or copy the accounts that we created online to our on-premises Active Directory. If this video has helped you in any way, uh, please consider um sharing subscribing commenting or mm, i forgot okay it's getting too late um thank you for watching and share subscribe command all the regular stuff and good night